again. It's time for another book review. All right, this time we're on to book five of nine in the Ali Beckstrom series by Devin Monk in our little book review a thon. This one is Magic at the Gate. Now, if you've read book four, then you know that there was one hell of a cliffhanger. Xavier Jones is comatose, his soul sucked into death itself. And who else but Ali Beckstrom going through a gate into death to take him back? Because man still has work to do. He can't just go taking a nap just because everything's falling apart around him. So things kick off with her going into death with her already dead dad and Stone, who is no one really knows what type of magic he is yet. He's just a magical gargoyle of awesomeness. But yeah, this is the fifth book in the nine book series by Devin Monk. This was... I've been forgetting to do this, but this one came out back in 2010. And something I actually haven't commented on in previous episodes, but Devin Monk is a beast of a writer because she pounded out two to three books per year. Now, granted, uh, it's like not that long of a book. It's a relatively normal sized paperback, about 350 pages, give or take. But that's about 900 pages a year of published writing that she just pounded out. That takes skill and is definitely worth of a tip of the hat. Tip. But enough praise and procrastinations and distractions and derailments. Let's get on with a bit of reading. Let's do the back cover so you get an idea of just what is in book five. Ali Beckstrom is a hound. She uses her magic to find unscrupulous magicians and stop them from harming innocents with their power. But every time she casts a spell, she places her mind, body, and soul at the mercy of magic, which uses her as much as she uses it. Allie's lover, Xavier Jones, is a guardian of the gates, imbued with both light and dark magic, and responsible for ensuring those energies don't mix. But Xavier lies in a coma, his soul trapped in death's realm. To rescue him, Allie must follow the specter of her deceitful late sorcerer father, Daniel Beckstrom, who is more than familiar with death's domain. And when, and when Ali discovers that the only way to save Xavian is to sacrifice her very own magical essence, she makes a decision that may have grave consequences for the entire world. How's that for dramatic? And if you've read the entire series, you know the true significance of the magic and the sacrifice that she gives in this book. Which, thinking back on it, that's pretty interesting. But we'll get into that later. Uh, let's do, as we've done in the past, the first page in a paragraph or so. It's the same uh, conversational style as Devin Monk has done in previous books and following ones, but it's always nice to kind of get the intro of a book to kind of see where things kick off and what the pace may be. Chapter 1. Sure, love can make a person do crazy things, but not me. No, never me. Still, there was nothing else to explain the fact that I had ended up in a battle between magic users over the discs my father invented while a magic wild storm tried to kill us all. There was nothing else but love that could make me turn away from my injured, possibly dying friends and step through a gate into death with no one beside me but my undead father and my gargoyle. Nothing but love would make me leave this world to bring Xavier Jones's soul back from death. I suppose if I had never met Xavier Jones, none of this would have happened. Man had a knack for messing up my life. Truth was, I liked it. He'd probably say the same about me if he weren't in a coma. As I took that first step off of the grass of Cathedral Park and through the gate into death, I braced for pain. I'd never stepped into death before, but I figured it was going to sting a little. No. A pause of breath, then cool, soothing numbness settled over me, whisking my pain away. I had never felt better. 
As soon as I put my foot down into death, that sense of well-being was gone, replaced with a sense of foreboding. Death itself had seen better days. Vacant, crumbling buildings and slick pools of black oil stretched out along the sidewalk of what I was pretty sure was supposed to be West Burnside Street. The city, and it was very clear we were in some twisted version of Portland, looked like a dump. If this was death, I wanted to meet the marketing team that had dreamed up both the fluffy, fluffy cloud golden harp thing and the internal fires of burning hell shtick. Yeah, it just gets better from there. Uh, if you've read this book, then you know that going into death is not easy. It's not safe. Most people don't come back unless you are incredibly stubborn or had a lot of backup plans or some things to negotiate with. Thankfully, Allie has Daniel Beckstrom and Stone, the gargoyle animate, so that helps when going into death. Although, even then, it's not recommended. And the stakes keep getting higher because at this point, you have the magical discs that are fully charged with magic that pays no price loose in Portland after the battle during the magical storm. And the authority has pretty much fractured pretty solidly at this point. Sides have been taken. You got the Allie Beckstrom side where a lot of her friends and teachers and whatnot are taking one side to try and protect things as they see it. You got the other side who have taken a majority of the discs and are causing all sorts of shenanigans with Undead Veiled. And then you have a few who are just playing Switzerland and not getting into the mess. And uh, another side is the ignorant m magic users who have no idea what the authority is, have nothing to do with it, and aren't really on the playing field yet. So it gets complicated. More complicated than it has been already. But that's what makes it fun. And it's fascinating to see by the end of this book how some of these various teams start blending together or at least meeting each other and start playing. Uh, as the series goes on, you'll see a lot more interaction between the Authority and the Hounds and the Mercs with uh, not Pike. Oh no, I'm blanking on his name now. Uh, Stotts. There we go. Yeah, Detective Stocks, Stotts and the Mercs are a lot of fun, and I'm really glad that they get to continue in the series and start playing a little more with everyone else. Uh, as always, you can find this book and the rest of the series via multiple book purchasing outlets like Powell's, Barnes & Noble's, Amazon, IndieBound, your local library or bookstore of your choice, and any other place that Google or your search engine of preference can find for you. Uh, the retail price is $7.99 for every book, including this one. Uh, if you go online, you can probably find a deal somewhere out there because it has been out for a little while now, so there are used copies available. Uh, I have a whole mix now of some that are slightly used, some other that are new. Eventually, I'm probably going to have to start replacing some because my books get beat up a lot between traveling around with me while I'm reading, so wouldn't be the first series that I've had to repurchase from time to time. Uh, if you want to learn more about the book, the series, and Devin Monk's uh, other series, devinmonk.com. She separates things by series, so you got the Ali Beckstrom series, Age of Steam, Broken Magic, which is the sequel series or follow-up series to the Ali Beckstrom series, and a couple of short stories here and there, and everything else. And if you have read this book and the other ones in the series, please comment. Let me know what you thought of this book as a this book itself, and then this book within the overall series. How did you feel the pacing went? How the characters interacted? What was one of your favorite scenes? Like, did you enjoy this one? Uh, if you've read the overall series, how do you felt this one sat within the overall series, considering what is yet to come and what the final play out of everything is? 
I think it's very interesting that in this one you get kind of a preview of just what Daniel Beckstrom has done with magic, for magic, and for his family. And at once we get to the ninth book, you will see just how all of that plays out. And why, for me, spoilers, for the father, I went from hating that man, that guy was a jerk, to respecting him. He really thought things through and made it work. But you'll have to wait until future episodes of this review series until we get to the books later on in the series to find out more. In the meantime, like I said, please post your comment of your opinions. Uh, click that thumbs up if you enjoyed this little review a thon series and want to see more. Subscribe to our channel so you can keep track of everything that we're doing. And I will tune in with you next time, which is tomorrow night for book six, I believe we're up to now. Let's see, book six is going to be Magic on the Hunt. So tune in next time.